Um, so let me introduce who we have with us as panelists. We have um, Sarah and Ovina from Study Alley, and we also have Ben from Albright Institute. So uh, let's uh, have a brief introduction about you guys, uh, what you guys do, and... Hi everyone, I'm Elena and um, I'm an international student like, like all of you. The only difference is that I've been here in the country for longer than you. Um, I came here with my husband 17 years ago and probably the first year I used to cry every day thinking why am I done? I left my family, I left everything and now no one here. But what I have to tell you as I introduce myself is that eventually you go back to the place where you're meant to be. So where, wherever your level was in your own country, you all got get back to that level. It just takes a while because we leave our network, we leave all of our connections, we leave everything and we need to rebuild here. Um, I also run the workshops for Study Adelaide and we do a number of different employability programs and I hope to see um, all of you, <laughs> no pressure, um, in the new year. Hi everyone, uh, yeah, my name is Sarah Cruz. I'm the Student Engagement Manager at Study Adelaide. Um, I've been working uh, with the international students now for uh, quite some time. Um, and I absolutely love it. I love to get to see the growth um, in students throughout their time in Adelaide and that experience that they get here uniquely in Adelaide. Um, and as Elena said, we've been running our employment support program together for, oh, I feel like it's almost five years together now. And before that, I was running it with Ben, so it's kind of like the full swing of things here. Um, so you're really going to get some great advice from all of us today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm currently the uh, Global Head of Business Development for Albright Institute of Business and Language. We uh, we teach English language courses to overseas students and we teach uh, vocational courses as well. But um, I am uh, a qualified career practitioner in Australia. I have postgraduate calls in careers education and development um, and I've been working with international students uh, for the majority in, in the career space in Australia for about 20 years. Uh, so thank you all for coming today. It's good to see your faces in the audience. Thank you, thank you guys for that introduction. Uh, so let me start with the most uh, basic but the important question that all international students have in their mind. How to work on their resume? What is that one thing that will help them get the job or at least qualify to that interview level? How can they improve their resume? So, Okay, the first thing about your resume is this. The resume that you have been using all of your careers in your home country, park that on the side grab a new template and start again. Because when people try to retrofit, it doesn't work. So it's better to get a brand new template, create that. Um, we have a, uh, a free service in um, Study Adelaide where we can check your resume for you as well once um, you have the, the new version for the Australian environment. So we definitely recommend that, that you do that. Uh, free templates can be in our website, but also um, Seek has got um, three templates that they recommend and they are all good. If you're going to use Seek, one page, that's fine. If it's more than one page, then use our template. Yeah, and I just add, um, there's certain information that doesn't need to be on your resume in Australia. So things like um, your gender, your nationality, your marital status, um, your date of birth, uh, your photo. I say the only reason you would include your photo is if you're applying for a modelling job, okay? So otherwise, take your photo off your resume. It's not included or required in Australia. Um, it, it would fall under the aspect of employees being able to see that and maybe make some judgmental decisions based that are not equitable. So therefore, we don't include that in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that. Um, ben, I want to ask you something. So when it comes to um, getting jobs or applying for uh, jobs, how important does um, um, a candidate's attitude, uh, you know, the importance of that attitude in the application? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, look, the, 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 honestly, the one piece of advice that I'll give you as, as international students is this. It's all in your attitude, right? If you're sitting across the table from me in an interview, 
I, honestly, I've already made up my mind about everything else by the time you get there. I've made up my mind whether pretty much you have the skill set. I've made up my mind whether or not you have the right background I'm looking for. I've probably even made up my mind as to whether you're a, a cultural fit in the organisation. Australia is very multicultural, as, as you know now. Um, so we want to have balance in our cultural fit in our organisation, right? That, that's, a, that's an important consideration. But it's your attitude that I'm looking for. If I have someone sitting across from me, and I'll, I'll tell you a story in just one sec. If I have someone sitting across from me and they say to me, basically, this is the job that I'm applying for, obviously, that's why I'm here, but I'll do anything that's required of me um, to, to do the job to 100%, and that's the, the basics of it, right? But if I have that kind of person sitting across from me, you have just gone on the shortlist straight away. Because I suppose that the, the kinds of areas that I work in in particular, I need people with positive, can do, always will do attitudes. That's what I want to see sitting across from me. And I see a lot of heads nodding, like, yeah, yeah, of course, that's, uh, that's a given, right? But the amount of times I've been at that interview table and I've asked people questions and they basically flat out refused to do a part of the job that I would want them to do, and straight away I've just gone, nah, bing, right? Because, you, you know, you guys are at a disadvantage, let's be honest, you're at a disadvantage right now. You're competing against people who are residents and citizens. Why is that important? Because employees don't get it yet. Sarah, Sarah will talk to you about this. Study Adelaide do a great job in advocating to employers in Australia that it's really easy to recruit international students. We know this, that they, that they just don't know it, right? So you're already at a disadvantage from that perspective. Your key advantage is the things that these other panellists were talking about before. It's your diversity of experience. It's your diversity of mindset, right? It's the attitude that you can bring to the table. Australia generally is considered to have a great working culture, uh, but countries like India uh, and like China and like so many other countries, they're, they're so competitive that we know that they also have great work cultures too. Show that to people that you're sitting across the table from. The story I was going to tell you is very, very brief. I used to work for uh, a, a small company called Le Cordon Bleu. They're a global culinary uh, hospitality organisation. We would uh, get the, the uh, soon-to-be graduates in front of big profile hotel groups. So we had hired, uh, we had the guy from Hong Kong over the director from Hong Kong. And he was doing interviews for people who were about to graduate in a few months. Now, in hospitality, these, all these young people, they want to work in front of us. They want to wear suits like me. They want to look important. They want to look flash, right? You know, they want to talk to the guests. So they were all saying to this director, I want to be front office manager. I Maybe mean, what they were asked, what do you want to do? Front office manager, director of rooms, all these high profile positions. Of course they do. There was one student who said, what do you want to do? I want to be the housekeeping manager. That's the person that's in charge of the people that clean the rooms. It's not very glamorous, right? That's the person they took. Why? Because it was the only person that went, I want to do the hard job. Why do I want to do that? Because I know that's what you need. And I know that's where you'll expect me to be, more to the point. That person aligned their expectations with the employer's expectations. Do that. That's how you're successful. And I've chatted to a couple of people in the room this morning. Bring your expectations down. It's not popular advice, <laughs> but it's true. You bring your expectations down a couple of notches, you're willing to start here instead of here where you might want to start, right? You're more likely to get your foot in the door. And then what's it all about? It's about networking. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec, but I'll pass over to my colleague. <laughs> um, I think it's not necessarily on um, attitude particularly that I want to talk about, um, but you mentioned obviously in the interview scenarios, I did want to touch on something there as well. Um, a lot of the time in an interview, you will need to give examples. So it's that preparation for an interview around um, what are my experiences that align to the job specification that I have seen for the job? Um, and what are some of the examples from either my previous work experience, can be here or overseas, um, my volunteering, my group project work at university or in my institution. What are those examples that I can use? And having a couple of different examples that you can do. Because when I'm asking you a question, it's not can you do it? It's more like have you done it? And this, by providing an example, you are demonstrating your ability to do that. And the example doesn't have to be exactly aligned to that, um, 
that question particularly, it just has to demonstrate your ability and your skills. And we heard before a lot about your um, your soft skills, your human skills that you can bring to the business. And a lot of the time in those questions, you get the chance to not only demonstrate them, but also potentially some of your technical skills that you have learned as well. Um, and when you are giving examples, I see so many times people will sit there and go, we did this, we did that. And then I'm, I'm stuck at the end going, so what actually did that candidate do? Because they said a lot of we, and that's great that as a team you were able to deliver that result, but I don't know actually what you did within that project to get that across the line. And so you don't want to leave your interviewer feeling a bit of an ambiguous answer then going, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, can they actually do it? And really, maybe most of your question would have been, I did this and I did that, but you used the term we, and we lost focus on what you were actually capable of. Um, so that's one of those times where you have to be selfish and you have to use the I um, and talk about yourself um, and talk about yourself proudly for what you have done and what you've achieved um, through any parts of your history of your work or experiences. Um, that's a really, really important takeaway to, to take from that because those examples are what an, um, an employer will quite often sit back on afterwards the interview and go, you know what, but that was actually like a really good example and I feel like really translates to the type of person we would want in our team and what they're capable of. Um, and you have to kind of get over this um, mentality of I need a job um, and therefore they're advertising so you know they need me. An employer is looking for the right person for their team. That, that's what they're looking at. They're not looking at you as an individual. They're not going, this person really needs a job, so let me find them a spot. They're going, I need the right person to fit into my team to help us keep moving forward. So you always need to think the employer's mindset is very different to your own. If we're just speaking freely, I have a few things to say as well. <laughs> okay, so what the first thing you need, obviously, is a resume. That's the first step. Then in Australia it's expected that you need you write a cover letter, which is a letter explaining what you have done before, what your interests are in relation to the job you're applying for. The cover letter can never be generic. It always needs to be specific to the job you're applying for. In many of our countries, there's no cover letter required. You sort of know people, you send your resume, you get an interview done. Easy. Here you need a cover letter or an expression of interest. Uh, this is a skill that you need to learn how to write because for you to be able to get a job in an advertised position, um, you need to be able to provide a strong cover letter that clearly outlines these are the five things you want in this job, this is how I fulfill the five things. This is how I have this knowledge, this is how I have these skills, this is what I've done before. What we see people doing a lot is they move, you know, we come to, we are in Australia now, so I leave everything behind, including my degrees, what I've done before, my internships, any experiences I've had. That's a mistake, because what you've done before, anywhere else, doesn't need to be here. You can do again. So you need to include as part of your resume, to start with, any, and mention in your cover letter, your experience, uh, any degrees you've got from overseas, your internships, any jobs you've done overseas, any publications, anything you have, you include in your resume as well. Um, then once you've got your resume, your cover letter, the interview will be the next step. And for that, the main preparation is, who is this company? What do they do? In detail, not like, oh yeah, uniting, they um, have a building in the city. That's not enough. We need to know more. Services, what do they provide? Why are they hiring? What's the team? But also, why do you want to work there? And I heard one last week, um, I'm part of a, a cyber recruitment drive at the moment, and, and there was one, um, one of the candidates, they were saying, oh, I want to work in cyber because that's the future. Yeah? Anything else you'd like to add? Nothing. That's not enough. So when you go to an interview, you need to be really specific about how that job, that role, that company resonates with you as a human being. Why do you care? And then you need to be able to clearly demonstrate that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that detailed answer. I think it answers a lot of your questions. Um, I do know that we have a lot of questions from you guys and we want to keep this session interactive, but I have a last question to ask you guys. As international students, a lot of 
um, us are basically just doing the same course and studying the same subjects. But we all want to stand out, maybe work on something that can, you know, make us feel like we are the right candidate for this job. What What is that one platform or one resource that you would each suggest um, them to work on or reach out to that can help them all stand out? <laughs> when you put the question like that, it, it's got to be linked in, right? If, if we're talking about a platform, it has to be linked in. Um, there was a comment made probably rightly so earlier, that uh, seek is, is where job ads <laughs> go to die. But that, 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 that is probably true. It shouldn't discourage you from applying on seek, by the way. Um, but look, LinkedIn, because, it, because it's a powerful networking platform, is LinkedIn what it used to be or what it was designed to be? I, I don't think it is anymore. It's, it's now verging into more of a social platform rather than a professional platform, however, its core function still remains. And I've done a lot of business by trawling through LinkedIn, learning how to search properly on LinkedIn, and I've made a lot of contacts, which leads me to the, the, the real point to answer the question is, the real platform is networking, right? And long-term networking. I was thinking when we were sitting up here before, because I was thinking about this, and I was thinking how many jobs have I actually applied for that I've had? Not many, right? The current one that I'm in, I didn't apply for. How did I get this job? Uh, I know a guy um, that I now I now report to, who I used to work with when I was at Navitas. Uh, I was thinking about when I worked at Le Cordon Bleu, I didn't apply for that job either. That came through a friend that I'd actually known for a long time and we'd worked together. And then if I go through all my jobs, there are very few jobs. In, and this is in my more mid to, I guess I'm getting to senior career stage. No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot less jobs that I've actually applied for than I've had. My point here is when people tell you network, what they don't mean is come to a room like this, grab a couple of business cards, go away, uh, touch base with that person once. That's, that's not networking, and I'm sure you, you probably know that. But networking is really about your personal brand. This is really the most important platform, right? So build your personal brand. If you want to get jobs into the future, and I always do this thing where I put your hand up if you want to be a, a manager and everyone in the room puts their hand up, right? But if you want to do that into the future, start building your personal brand now. And what's the most important part of your personal brand? How other people see you, how other people perceive you. If you're that person that is in the workplace and is really well known for their teamwork, their leadership skills, that's your personal brand. Um, and I, I think from, from my perspective, I'm confident enough to say this, I think leadership is, is my thing. Um, and I think it's, you know, they always say, um, people will always remember how you made them feel, right? That's honestly one of the most important things that you can do, whether it's networking and getting to know people, or whether it's actually in the workplace. How you, the impression you leave with people is one of the most important things. Um, because we all want to work with people that we get along with. If, if I think about the people I've recruited over time or I've brought into my networks or opportunities, it's people that I enjoy working with for various reasons, but the key is they're just easy to work with and they're fun and they're creative and they're hard working, right? So if I could say one thing to all of you, it's that that's what networking is all about. It's your personal brand. Build it properly and it's a long-term thing. I'm talking back 20 plus years for me and looking at all the jobs I've had, I actually can't think of one I've actually put an application in for that I wasn't flagged or tapped on the shoulder or approached for. And I guess that's, you know, that's my own personal brand, how I like to make other people feel. Um, so honestly, that's a long-term game. And I think that's what a lot of students miss out on is they think it's a short-term thing that they can build and fix and then let go. It's not. It's a thing that you work on slowly and surely over time. Others have said, and it's true, it's not what you know here, all of it, it's who you know. And it definitely is who you know, and then it becomes what you know. So work on your personal brands, build those. Um, make other people want to bring you into their circle, and that's how you'll be successful. 
Can I just add to that as well? Um, ben, networking, like fundamental. Um, really, really important thing to remember with networking is it's a two-way street, right? So you might come to an event like this today where you get to meet different people. You might get a business card and you think that that's networking, but networking is a two-way street. It's about what you will give to them and what they can give to you. So I give a quick example. Um, when I was a student, I did my um, a placement as part of my um, studies and my manager at my placement was my referee for my first couple of jobs out of uni. Um, and they were my referee for Study Adelaide, um, which also shows how long I've been at Study Adelaide. Um, but they were my referee to get into the job at Study Adelaide. And my actual chief executive at the time didn't even actually get fully to talk to them and get a reference check. It was their knowledge of each other and the voicemails back and forth that eventually was like, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine, it's all good. <laughs> Um, but then a couple of years into my job here at Study Adelaide, I overheard my chief exec saying, oh, we can't get this person that we wanted for a short-term contract because they're unavailable. And I said, oh, what's the role? Like, what are we looking to do? And, and I've been keeping in touch with my, my ex-colleague and, uh, and they said, oh, this is the kind of role. I said, oh, well, I think that they would be interested and I know that they're coming up available um, with their other role. Um, so it was then a phone call saying, hey, are you interested coming in for a three month role? And they're still with us five years later. Um, so um, it's that they were my referee. I was then a referral for them to get a job. It's a two way street over a long period of time um, that those things can happen. So again, just remember, it's not what you can always get from them. It's also what you could potentially be giving back to them further down the line in your career as well. Edina, do you want to add something to that? Oh, there's always more to say. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard when we're new and we're just starting out and we don't know anyone or how anything works in regards to a new city, new culture, new everything. And it's hard to go, well, great to hear what I can do for them, but I, I really can't do anything for others. It's, you know, I need a job now and there's nothing really that I can do. Which, you know, it may or may not be truth, but that's sometimes how we perceive ourselves at this point, just arrived, new. What I'd say to you is this. So if there are certain companies that, or, you know, areas of industry that you are sort of watching because you're like, I can work in this area, that's my area of focus, I'm gonna work in this field. You need to be going to the events that they are in and then every time saying hello, da, da, da. The thing is, Adelaide is not very big. Um, some of you are coming from massive, massive cities. I, I know a few of you where you come from and they're like, you know, millions upon millions. Adelaide is not like that. When you look at individual, comp individual industries, it's even obviously less people. Which means that the same people go to the same events all the time. So you start to go to the events that someone in an industry is going and you see the main people everywhere, the same people everywhere. There's nothing wrong, you don't need to go, hey, I've baked you a cake. No, because I, no, you don't do that. But go and say hello, hi, I've seen you at the space and cyber event. What did you think of that? Also remember that people love to talk. I'm an example of that. So it's Ben and Sarah, but you know, we say that in, in friendship. Um, People love to talk about themselves. That's a fact. So ask them, but don't say things like, how are you going? That's too open. What sort of question is that? But you could say, you know, what brings you here today? Blah, 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 blah. And then you just listen and go, mm, mm, great, thank you so much, like something. That would be your way to you know, give back at this stage. Then, as I mentioned, as you grow in your career, it gets to the point that Sarah mentioned where you know, she wasn't in a position to offer this person or recommend this person for a job. Then it becomes bigger as, as your influence um, you know, increases as well over time. Yeah, I'll just jump in on that, right? You're absolutely right. And you, you, know, you guys, you, you have stuff to offer. Ellen is absolutely right, right? Networking is, is about you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's mutual benefit often. It doesn't always happen as a transaction like that. It might be that I'm doing something for you and in, in, in the future you'll remember that and, and you'll do something for me, right? But it, it doesn't, there should be an expectation there when you, um, when you help someone. But you do have things to offer, right? And that's your time. Uh, as, as, as Ellen, I think, said earlier, any organisation you're interested in, in working for, the, the two killers for you are going to be you don't understand the organisation and you don't understand what they want in people. 
Um, that's the, like in any interview, this should be the basics, by the way. But I've actually interviewed people where I've said, tell us about um, our company, and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I'm a polite person, uh, but at that point in time, I just feel like, oh, you're wasting my time, go away, right? I'm not, I'm too busy for this, but I, I don't do that because I'm a nice person. But um, <laughs> most of the time. But uh, you, you, you have your time, right, and your energy. So keep an eye on that company. Are they doing, um, do they do corporate social responsibility? What does it look like? Uh, what kind of charities are they giving to? Ask them if you can get involved free of, free of, of, of charge time, right, for your, your time. Because that puts you in a situation, in a semi-social situation with those people and allows you to build, what? The relationship, which is just so important. You know, it's like, um, uh, I'm sure there, there are some, some of you from China here. You do business in China, what's the most important thing first? building a relationship with, with the person or the partner that you're wanting to do business with. They want to get to know you. It makes perfect sense to me. There's no difference here in Adelaide because we are so small. Sarah Gravy, a, a great example. When you know someone and that person recommends someone to you, you don't really even need to worry about anything else. If they're recommending you, that's fine. Why? Because not only is their reputation on the line in a, in a, in a hidden way, right, that, that is not spoken but spoken, um, but also, you know that person, you trust them, you've developed that relationship. So relationships are absolutely everything. You do have something, you've got your time and energy. If you're smart, you're keeping your eyes open and your ears open and you're doing your research and you're reading, you'll find ways in the door. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. That was amazing. And I think we found some brilliant insights on how you can actually start networking and get out of the comfort zone and build connections. Um, I would like to ask if anyone has any questions, it's a time that you can ask. So, do we have any questions? I have one question about how can I put my reference, my resume, or collateral, how I share this? Yeah, do you want yeah, so with referees, um, you always, on your resume, just put referees, like the category, and then underneath, available upon request, which means you get me in for an interview, I'll tell you who my referees are. You don't meet with me, there's no referees for you. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one, I would agree 100%. It's funny because I've changed my thoughts on that. I used to put them on there and, and, and um, then I, I went to the more modern. Uh, uh, narrative of, of taking them off. Oh, I know. But there's only one exception to that, right? And this is about leveraging your networks. And that's where you know the person looking at that resume is going to know one of your referees. Yeah. Yeah. That is the only time I would put it on there. Um, if I'm applying with Eleanor for a role and Sarah's my referee, and these guys are best mates, as we say in Australia, I am absolutely putting Sarah on my resume like a big red light flashing. I know her, I know her, she's good, and you like her, and therefore employ me. Seriously, I use all the tricks, all the tricks in, in, in your book. So you need to be smart, right? It's critical thinking. One size never fits all when it comes to an application, ever. And Eleanor pointed that out before as well with the cover letters. Cover letters were we talked about this, Junior. Cover letters should always be tailored, very much tailored to not just the job type you're applying for, but the organisation yeah. you're yeah. applying for. And again, this comes back to what I call the seven Ps, but only six of them are appropriate in a space like this. <laughs> and that is proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. And it's so true. I think that's six of them. The seventh one should remain hidden for now. But proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Simple, very true. Anything, any job you're applying for, if you're applying for 100 jobs a week, you're doing it wrong. Honestly, you are doing it wrong. You're wasting your time. You should be refining it down to the ones that you, you're really interested in, that you want to go for, and that you know something about. Research, research, research. It, just treat it like an assignment. And just quickly to finish on referees, is to please ask the people before you put them forward as your referee if they're happy to be your referee. And then also let them know that when they may be expecting a contact. So if you had an interview um, and they've asked you for your referees, to please then contact your referees as soon as you get out of that interview to say, I've just had the interview, they've requested to have my referees. Um, you may expect a phone call or an email in due course. Um, and provide them with insight into what is the role you apply for, what is the company, what are your expected um, tasks. Anything that they can then be prepared for when they've got to answer questions around your capabilities. So you're doing some of that homework to help your referee to make sure they put forward the most glowing examples of why you are the best candidate for that company. They're working for you. Awesome, thank you. 
Any other questions, guys? Come on, this is a chance. Don't be shy. Anyone? Okay. Thank you so much. Can I add one more thing? Um, so my husband just had an interview last week and he, the one question he took out of it that he absolutely loved was, um, what do you expect you'll do in the first 100 days on the job? So how many of you have looked at job applications before and applied and feel like you could answer what you think the first 100 days are? I think if you can't go in an interview understanding roughly from the job spec what would be expected of you in the first 100 days, you haven't done enough homework about the company and the role. Yeah, I've had to answer those. They're really tough. Um, well, one more thing that I'll, I'll say, right, going back to LinkedIn, I think I was talking with either Junior or someone else who came over earlier. Um, don't feel shy of, of searching through LinkedIn, narrowing down some people that you think uh, might be approachable for the kind of job or role that you want. Now, nine out of 10 times, they're probably not gonna respond. But if that one out of 10 does respond, you're on to a winner, right? I'll, I'll, I'll give my slightly humorous example. Um, so my, my partner, who is, uh, who's from India, is over in Australia on a what, 490 or 491, I don't know, Tejas will know what the visa is coming, but it's on one of those skilled independents, right? So um, she reached out to me on LinkedIn, right? And was looking for an English teaching job with the organisation. The rest I won't go into, it's not important right now. But, but the, the point is that, um, I, I, like someone like me, I like that, right? Please don't all message me on LinkedIn. But, <laughs> but I like that, right? Because it shows me one thing. What does it show me? Initiative, confidence. Right, that this person is, is actively out there doing things that are a little bit different. She reached out to someone she didn't know, didn't meet, but was definitely within the sphere of employment opportunities. And guess what? We did have something going at that time. So what did I do? I was like, yeah, I know we need people in this area. It's not in my department, but I flicked it onto someone else, right? Don't be shy of doing that, but make it meaningful. Don't just go and hit people up and, you know, you've sent a resume to a pharmacist for a, a job in uh, construction, right? Like, that's not going to fly. <laughs> Make it tailored, but don't be shy of doing that. LinkedIn's a really good tool. You just never know what your timing is going to be like. Timing might be poor and they might actually write back to you. Sorry, Ben, not right now. Really appreciate you reaching out, though. Can I keep this on file? you would be like, yeah, that means nothing. But you never know, right? Do that. LinkedIn can be a good tool, especially here in Adelaide. At the very worst, you might be writing to them saying, look, I'd be happy to get involved in any kind of um, internship or unpaid work or even just helping out with the organisation's charity work in corporate social responsibility. Whatever it is, it, it shows initiative. It's a slightly different tact to just putting in a, a resume or going to their recruitment um, site on their website and submitting your resume that way. If you reach out to someone that you think, like, this is the person that could be my boss, actually. I, I could definitely work under this person, given, like, what they do. They'll see that. They'll know, because they'll go and look at your profile, right? Yeah, that's interesting. So don't be shy of doing these things. I think often what stops us the most is, is us, right? Absolutely. So I think, guys, LinkedIn does sound like the key word of the session. Um, so in respect to that, we will be having some free LinkedIn headshots after the session. So do get your LinkedIn headshot. And thank you so much guys for the amazing insight and some beautiful discussions that we did. Feel free to have a word with them um, after the session as well. And thank you so much for attending the session.